Good morning, friends. We are starting off with a bang, immediately getting straight to work on the dissertation because basically all of my routines fell out the window the second I started working on this chapter. My morning routines went out the window, my morning workout went out the window, but I needed to get this chapter done. And so starting off with writing is essentially indicative of where I was at while trying to submit this. But before we jump straight into the what am I doing, I just want to make a quick note that oftentimes these videos are the ones that get the most views. The times when we are struggling, when I post a thumbnail where I am in tears, for some reason those videos simply perform three times better than anything else that I post. And I don't want to normalize that. It makes me a little uncomfortable. And so I want to show the realities of what it's like to be a PhD student in a bit of survival mode, but I also want you to know that I think that there's perhaps another way to do this. And while I did not figure it out while submitting this chapter, I want to think creatively about how it is that we can define work as a PhD student in my future videos. I think I might actually get this done on time. You know, that is brilliant. Thank you. I'm so excited for you. I absolutely will not be getting this done on time. <laughs> well, by getting it done on time, I mean accepting the parts of my thesis that I just do not have the time or energy to fix. A done dissertation or a done thesis is a good thesis. I don't need to take my five hands when I work with you guys. <laughs> True friendship. True friendship. I love it. When, okay, when I finish this PhD, I'm going to be insufferable because I'm going to take on a million new hobbies. Prepare to be sick of me. <laughs> One thing I've really struggled with as a writer, as a researcher, has been starting. And it's not the getting words on paper right away. It's getting past the need to make an introduction, the first section, perfect. I keep going back to the literature, I look for inspiration, I edit and revise and revise and revise and outline, and this is something that has worked for me in the past, but what I found while working on this dissertation chapter was that it is not working for me in the present. I was writing very slowly and was really struggling because I couldn't see the woods from the trees. I was so fixated on having a perfect section or a perfect introduction that I didn't think about the overall narrative structure of what it is that I was trying to write. And that left a lot of work for me later on. But I share this because it was part of my writing process and I don't believe that I mention it in my updates throughout. But looking back on this in retrospect, there are a couple things that I think I would do a little bit differently. I had this conversation with a, a classmate, or at least with that first year recently, mm -hmm. where I was like, part of this process has been learning to trust myself. So like, instead of freaking out that I'm not getting the work done, know that there will come a point in time in which the stars align and my brain says it's time to work. And she goes, yeah, but that's really stressful. And I'm like, well, part of that is that like, I've reduced my stress in the lead up to that by trusting myself. But then yeah, the actual doing it is a really stressful process. But, yeah. Like, I don't know. I feel like doing the work is stressful anyways. I just, it's just like at which points we like the intensity has like a little bit of stress over a long period of time versus a lot of stress in a short period of time. I just feel like I've gotten more and more self-conscious. Me too. Like in undergrad, I was just starting to develop some concerns over my writing. I used to be able to bang out a 10 page paper in community college in a day. And I'm not going to say it was good. I, it certainly was not. I, had a lot of I miss, I there. miss her unbridled confidence. Yeah. It has left my body. It doesn't exist anymore. And now I just feel like an anxious, overly self-aware, <laughs> I don't necessarily regret it as much as I don't know how the hell I'm going to do this now. 
Somebody asked me earlier, I had to do this interview where somebody asked me if I had advice for my former self when she was applying to PhD programs and whether I would do it again and if I regret it. And I was like, I don't regret it because, you know, I made the best decision I could given the information that I had at the time. Would I have done things differently? Yeah. Yeah, like a, like a fair amount of it I would have done quite differently. But these are the consequences of my actions and there is no, you know, that's just, we shouldn't, we shouldn't, we shouldn't live with that regret. Um, however, I just wish that past Kaylin had been able to come up with more words so that way present Kaylin would have less to do and less to stress over. <laughs> that is, that is my one regret. <laughs> After my little conversation with Katie, I just want to talk a little bit about the importance of other people and the importance of community when we are in this process of struggling and working on dissertations or trying to get through a major project. I truly could not have gotten through undergrad without my friend Chloe. I couldn't have gotten through Oxford without my friends. And I couldn't have gotten through writing this chapter had it not been for the one-on-one -on -one study sessions with Katie and Kate and Chanel and Danielle and my partner being there throughout this process and supporting me and also reminding me when I needed to just stop. It's really difficult when you're in the middle of it to remind yourself that sometimes the thing that you need in order to refresh your brain, in order to show up for your work properly, is to actually let go. And while I was on deadline and I was incredibly stressed, I was reminded to just take a few moments to focus on something that brought me some joy. And so I read this little novella for an hour before getting back to my desk and continuing my work. And it really helped me restructure my thinking because sometimes when you're just looking at the project and you're not seeing beyond it. It's a little challenging to remind yourself who it is that you're speaking to and what it is that needs to be said. And I just want to just quickly echo the importance of having your people and relying on them and also taking those moments of silence. And guys, today has been rough. I just feel like I have that kind of brain fog when you're feeling really exhausted, but you have so much anxiety that your body doesn't actually let you rest. So I tried to sit down and get work done this morning, but I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. And I sat down on my computer and just could not, could not come up with any words couldn't focus on my reading and decided that I would go back to sleep and tried that and was just still feeling really iffy. And then my partner came home and we ended up taking Moo for a long walk for about an hour. And then we picked up some boba and that did the trick. I apparently just needed to actually leave the house and actually treat my body the way it deserves. 
and like get fresh air and movement. And then I felt so much better. I'm not saying I'm perfectly fixed. They feel really anxious and just a little strung out, but I sat down and jumped on Zoom with Chanel and Katie again, which was just so helpful. I've become so codependent on them as they're currently working on their theses. And during the week, I'll be quite dependent on the Accepted Society crew for keeping me going. But I found a document that was really helpful in terms of my thesis, but the challenge that I have with this project and have had as an issue with this project from the beginning is that basically anything that corroborates the hypothesis that I have in my head about the kind of intellectual origins of these laws, it's not fun material to read. It's not happy material. <laughs> It's material that shows the just heinous inhumanity of investors in the colonies, the governors, the legislatures, etc. And it's not a fun project. There are days when it feels really difficult to get through this material and to, to deal with it. And then there are days where I feel a strange distance from the things that I'm working on, mostly because I'm talking about, you know, theoretical analyses and I'm not looking at the sources themselves in quite the same way. But today, because I'm looking at a lot of private papers rather than statutes, it just feels closer to home, I suppose. Like I can, I can envision just the absolute terror that these people, that these men, instituted and it's I don't know I'm having a really hard time with it today and so I am I am getting words on paper and like I feel like and I feel that we're heading in the right direction it's just a really difficult project and I don't know why this is what I decided to do like I wish I had picked a dissertation project that was happier because I'm looking at the way that the law treats children and then the way that the law treats African descendant children and black women and it's it's an important project it's an important contribution to the field and it holds these lawmakers and these governors to account for their actions and that's what's important but today i'm having trouble with it as the one who's reading these documents and having to think about them and think through them and add these analyses and all these things and today it just feels particularly difficult i don't want to work on this anymore and i am now going to go make dinner and take an hour break to step away from this because I feel like, as you can tell, I am getting kind of fed up with it and frustrated. And it just makes me sad. It makes me upset. So I'm gonna go make some food and spend a little bit of time with my partner and I'll be back. <music>
Good morning, friends. It is the next day. It is, I think, about 6.30, I would assume. I got up at 6 because I have a 7.30 a.m. meeting because people I'm having the meeting with are on the other side of the world. And so I had to get up early in order to have my solid morning routine. I normally would get up at like 7 unless I was going to the gym, but today we are up a little bit early and I'm actually quite grateful for it because I get a couple of quiet moments to just breathe. I ended up not returning to my dissertation last night. I just needed to step away from it. I'm just getting quite upset as you saw in the last time that we spoke and just needed to walk away for a little while, but I am back and have some meetings today, like a lot of meetings today, and trying to work on the dissertation in the times when I don't have a bunch of calls. <laughs> so that's one challenge for today. I don't have just a straight dissertation day. It's a lot of other work and things that need to be done. I did a little bit of journaling this morning. I'm gonna try to do my Chinese lesson because I try to do them in the morning and do the habit stacking thing so that way it gets done. I am on, I think, day 76 of my Duolingo streak, so I'm very proud of myself for that. I am preparing for my trip to Taipei, Shenzhen, and Hong Kong. So I'm getting somewhere. Was it Wushu Yi Dian Dian? Zhongguo? No, Hong Yu. Anywho, I'm quite tired this morning, but I did sleep so much better last night than I did the day before. So that is a blessing, and I'll take it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my Chinese, make them some breakfast, <gasps> and get the day started. <laughs> don't have any more time left to mess about. And for all of y'all who have been watching my videos for a while and you think that, oh, she must be so productive. If you've been watching my videos, if you've actually been paying attention, there have been many days where I've produced zero new words. But today, Today we have to produce many, <laughs> many new words because it is, it is the end. This is the last day. I have to submit it tonight. And <laughs> call me a masochist, but for some reason it feels like the clouds are clearing and I'm like kind of excited to write this dissertation again. Where was this desire? Where was this clarity? like a week ago. Riddle me that. So if you are under the illusion that this process is easy, first and foremost, just watch any of my videos. But secondly, if you think that it's this linear arc <laughs> from the point in which you decide to write a dissertation and you were given permission to write a dissertation and then you write the dissertation that is also very inaccurate <laughs> and so i am here sitting at my computer and it is time to finish and submit this dissertation there's so much work to be done but 
kind of excited about the challenge. So we're just going to take it as an adventure that we're embarking on together today. I need coffee. I feel like I'm like at my wit's end and that I've cracked a little bit, but you get to enjoy and be entertained by this process and me rambling. So I need to actually work now. Wish me luck. There's something kind of magical about the countdown to a deadline. And you may not agree with me and that's totally all right. But the times that I remember my projects the most and I feel the most connected and excited is in these final hours when all of a sudden things begin to click. And on this particular day, I had a lot of work to do to flesh out what I had written before and make it all make sense. And while I was incredibly frustrated that this work hadn't been done beforehand, it was a moment where I did see the value in the work. And I find that that is one of the most challenging things about doing a dissertation is continuously racking up against this idea that it needs to be novel, that it needs to make a massive contribution to your field of study. And that is both an incredible opportunity, but it is also incredibly daunting. Because when you have a paper when you're an undergrad, you don't think anybody's gonna read it. But even though many people probably won't read my dissertation, it's the feeling as though, you know, it's public and that people are going to interact with it. That makes it so challenging. Hi friends, this is my little check-in update. So I had such a good productive hour sprint on the first section and got the first section done this morning before I believe I even talked to you. And I've been working on section two ever since and it is perhaps my most difficult section because I'm having to do a lot of contextualizing and writing up this social history of colonial Virginia and I'm talking about the disillusion of the Virginia Company and the transition of the General Assembly to a Crown Colony legislature. And I also have to talk about demographic changes. And so it's just like a bit of a difficult section to pull together. Once I get that done, I think it'll be smoother sailing. And I wanted to share with you my new reward system. So I made up these post-it notes that I have on my computer and they say the section title and if I complete it or when I complete it, because I have to complete it, I have a reward. So I got a slice of chocolate cake. It's in the fridge and I'm not allowed to eat it, not allowed to have it until I finish section two. After I finished section three, I told myself that I could have a 15 minute reading break to enjoy Empire of Storms, which is what I'm reading at the moment. And when I finish section four, I get to take a long break and go for a walk. Now here is the hang up. At the moment, I have my reward for section four being a long walk or a long break. And my reward for section five is getting boba. However, my favorite boba place closes at six o'clock on Sundays. And I don't think I'm going to survive this evening if I do not have boba. So we are going to Hamilton style, right? Like we are literally running out of time, pun intended. Going to move my reward for section four to be getting boba and to take a longer break after section five. I have five total sections in this particular chapter and then I need to finish up and finalize the introduction and the conclusion. We're doing well. Like I'm, I'm really proud of myself for getting this far, but I'm going to have to hustle because I really want Boba, but that requires that I finish not one, 
not two, but three sections in two and a half hours. So it's time to bust a move. I apologize in advance if this makes anybody anxious, but I really wanted to make a really dramatic montage. So here it is. Section two is now complete, which means that I get chocolate cake. That took forever. I definitely did not reach my deadline of trying to finish, finish three sections in like two and a half hours. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, it has been two and a half hours and I just finished section two. So section three should be easier to write. Fingers crossed, but we're gonna take a little break. I'm gonna eat my cake. And then we're gonna write. A little fun fact about me is that I basically tune every single project that I've ever done to a particular soundtrack. And while working on my dissertation, I was listening to the Oppenheimer soundtrack. And so I will admit that that greatly influenced my decision to make this a dramatic final countdown kind of montage. And so I do hope you enjoy it, but if you don't, I'm sorry. I really enjoy it. <laughs> I did it. I finished. I hit submit. It is 1.30 in the morning. We are closing all of our tabs and I am calling it a night. I know that there's going to be a lot of feedback and that this is going to change a lot after the chapter conference, but it was an absolute marathon of an effort to try to get this chapter complete and it feels so good to hit send and to know that I have at least one week where I don't have to look at this thing. And now I can look forward to my trip to the States, getting to see my committee and getting to share this experience with you all. So I hope that it was entertaining. <laughs> 
I hope that it helped to give you the push that you might need at the end of the semester or at the end of the term to give it your all. This was really difficult and I am just so incredibly grateful, especially to my friends and the members at Accepted Society for being there directly along the way. I honestly couldn't have done it without the writing group and without having these one-on-one -on -one Zoom calls with Katie and Chanel and Kate and Danielle, and I'm just so grateful. So thank you all so much for watching. And that is a wrap. I am so relieved that it is now over and I get to go relax finally and actually read my book for fun and take a deep breath. So thank you for being here and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye friends.